Hey buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about statics and today I'd like to go over distributed loads. What's a distributed load? At the beginnings of statics class we usually talk about loads as acting on a point and so you see a lot of pictures that look like this. We'll have a beam or some kind of structure and we'll have a load coming down on it like that. Well, what does that mean in real life? Well, it could be part of a bridge. It could be part of a uh, roof truss or something. Maybe this is a truck parked on a bridge. Remember, this is the value of free body diagrams. You can take a complicated situation and turn it into something simple to analyze. Well, not all loads are point loads. Many, many loads are distributed. That is, they don't happen at one place on a beam. They're distributed across it. They could be distrib distributed across a plate or any kind of structure. And that's how we draw a distributed load. So let's give this some numbers. Let's say this is 3 meters. And let's say this is 500 newtons per meter. That means every meter of this beam bears 500 newtons of load. Well, the total load is 500 newtons per meter times 3 meters, 1,500 newtons. So total force is 1,500 newtons. This is, how we, this is how we take care of this idea that loads can be distributed across a structure. Now before I go any further, maybe let's look at some examples of distributed loads. I was originally trained as an aerospace engineer and wings have loads distributed all down them. When you look at the wing of an airplane, the load doesn't just happen in one place. It's distributed all down the wing and in the simplest case that load is basically elliptical. I found this nice picture of a uh, distributed load calculated down the wing of a glider that has long thin wings. looks like this. So you can see that the load is distributed along the wing. It goes to zero at the tips, or pretty close to zero. And there's a little divot in the middle where the fuselage is, because the fuselage doesn't make a lot of lift. Now you don't have to go to something that exotic to see distributed loads. How about the balcony on a building or an apartment? What happens if you put a bunch of people out on a balcony? Well, the individual people really are uh, point loads. They really are uh, concentrated. I, my feet aren't that big, so um, if, if this were uh, if this were part of a balcony, let's get rid of that. There's a bunch of people standing here. And so on. When you add all those people up, the effect is that it really is a distributed load. If you put enough concentrated loads together, it acts like a distributed load. For another example that has to be familiar to a lot of people, how about snow on a roof? I don't know of a better distributed load than that one. If there's a huge snowstorm, snow's pretty heavy. Um, you could distribute that load all along a roof. That's a very nicely uh, averaged out load all across the roof. And that load is real. You have to be able to design for it. So those are examples of distributed loads. So how do we handle this mathematically? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Let's take the simplest case of a cantilever beam. And this could be maybe a balcony. And let's say it's three meters. Hopefully my head's out of your way here. Does that look okay? Yeah, that's all right. And Let's say this distributed load is down. It could be down, it could be up. Doesn't matter. And let's say it's 1,000 newtons per meter. Now, if you're like me and you were originally trained to think in pounds, which is too bad if you were, I'm 215 pounds. That makes me, I don't know, 95, 96 kilograms, something like that. So this is a little more than me, right? That's a it would be a, a real, a fairly large uh, engineering technology professor. I'm, I'm more of a medium-sized, I, I guess. 
Anyway, so you, but you, it's easy to imagine that if there was a beam sticking out from a building on a balcony or something, there could be furniture or people or whatever it is you put out on a balcony that could act like this. So, how do you deal with this? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. If all you're trying to do is find the reaction forces and the reaction moments, the way to handle this is to concentrate the total force at what's called the centroid of this shape. The centroid is the geometric center of it. A way to think about it physically, if I cut this shape out of a uniform piece of material, like a piece of plywood or something, the centroid is where that shape would balance. Well, for a rectangle, it's pretty easy. The centroid is in the middle. So, for the sake of uh, reaction forces and reaction moments, I can concentrate this force at the centroid, and the beam back here doesn't know the difference. Now, if I'm trying to do, do load shear moment diagrams and calculate the, the, the reactions along the beam, it's more complicated. I do have to account for this um, as I move out. That'll be another video. So for reaction forces, so for reaction forces and moments, you can concentrate, concentrate, there we go. Concentrate the total load at the centroid. So, what would this look like? Now, remember the recipe. I have a working diagram. I'm going to draw a free body diagram. I'm going to sum the forces in moments, and then I'm going to solve for something. So, let's do that. I'm going to erase this here, and I'm going to draw my free body diagram. So there's my free body diagram, and I'm going to draw a, a downward concentrated load. Just repeat the drawing we just had there. Now, I've got to have a moment and a force at the cantilever. Well, if this is trying to make the beam rotate counterclockwise, and by the way, I'm going to need a coordinate system there. But this is trying to make the, the beam work a rotate clockwise, I'm going to need a counterclockwise moment there. And if this is, everything's trying to push down here, my, my reaction force, make that moment, reaction moment, reaction force is going to be up. That's it. So there's my free body diagram. Next thing, let's sum the forces in the y direction. Now, how am I, let me get this out of the way here. I already told you, it's going to be easiest to replace that with a concentrated force. So the centroid of a rectangle is right in the center. There's my total force due to that. This was 3,000 newtons because we had 1,000 newton per meters over 3 meters. And that makes this distance 1.5 meters since it acts at the, the force acts at the center of the beam, the, the concentrated force acts at the center of the beam, and the beam is three meters long. So let's see, I'm going to add this up and that up. So let's see, let's sum the moments. And I'm going to do it about this point right here, and I'll just call that point A maybe. So my reaction moment is going to be counterclockwise. And this is going to be acting clockwise, so this is going to be negative. 3,000 newtons times 1.5 meters, and that all has to equal zero. So, my reaction moment is 4,500 newton meters. And the forces in the vertical direction, that's really easy in this case. It's going to be my reaction force, which I've drawn up, minus 3,000 newtons, my total, my total uh, force there from the uh, distributed forces. And I'm going to get my reaction force is 3,000 newtons. So there you go, gang. 
pretty straightforward, right? This problem only gets harder when this isn't a rectangle anymore and it gets a little harder to find the centroids. But we'll work on that in another video. For now, hope this helps and we'll talk to you next time.